Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Lindsay, a member of the CK12 team, and my colleague Katie and I will be running today's webinar called CK12's Flexbook 2.0 Platform. We're so glad that you've joined us today. Yes, welcome, everyone. Many of you joining us today are participating in the CK12 Certified Educator Program. If so, welcome back or welcome to the program. If you're brand new and would like to learn more and officially register with us, you can visit ck12.org slash certified and press register to get started. We have recently revamped the Certified Educator Program and have new streamlined requirements for 2020. So to become certified, you'll watch two mandatory on-demand sessions. You'll then join us for three core live sessions, which you can attend at your convenience. This session counts as one of those three live requirements. Next, you'll complete the accompanying assignments for all of the sessions. And then lastly, you'll complete a final form to request your certification. And then you'll be CK12 certified. At the end of today's webinar, we can discuss more about the Certified Educator Program for any participants with questions, or you can type any questions in the Q&A window for our team to answer privately. Before we get started, I do want to make sure everyone's comfortable with Zoom and how that platform works. So you have two windows. They've already been up and running, which is great to see. Um, we ask that if you have questions for our team that you post them in the Q&A window, and that helps us track and make sure that we've answered all of your questions before we sign off today. Um, so definitely go ahead and post your questions for us there. The chat window, on the other hand, is for community conversation. You're welcome to introduce yourselves, tell us where you're from, what subject you teach, how you're connected with CK12. Um, but when you do that, if you want to share with everyone, just make sure you click that all panelists and attendees. It's defaulted to panelists, so if you had a question for us um, or wanted to kind of just communicate something with us, that would be fine. Once again, questions would still go in Q&A for our team, um, but then if you just want to share and talk to each other, check that all panelists and attendees option. Um, I'll also mention real quick that we are recording this session and it will be available within 24 hours on our ck12.org slash webinars page. So um, the recording will be available. So don't worry, you guys can sit back and relax and hopefully learn a lot of things today. Um, here are the topics that we are going to cover. We're going to talk about navigating CK12 to find flexbooks and related content. From signing in to searching for books and resources, we're gonna make sure you're comfortable exploring CK12. Next, we'll talk about the Flexbook 2.0 platform. This robust platform unifies CK12 resources and delivers lessons in an interactive and engaging format. Then we've gotta talk about CK12's adaptive practice system. Our intelligent system adapts to students by challenging them with harder questions or recommending resources. And then lastly, I'll talk about assignments and reports. You can assign a Flexbook 2.0 lesson or related modalities. Um, I'll show you how to do that and I'll show you what the class level reports look like as well. I do wanna mention we have two resource pages you might find handy for this session. The first will help you get started with our Flexbooks in the 2.0 platform. You can access it via the tiny URL tinyurl.com slash CK12 Flexbooks 2020. And the second resource is on getting started with adaptive practice and assignments. You can view that, download it, and save it at tinyurl.com slash CK12 Practice 2019. We'll put those links in the chat window for you to reference as well. Perfect. Thank you, Katie. Um, I'm going to jump straight into a live demo of how to navigate CK12 and find Flexbooks and related content. So I'm going to take over the screen here. And I am logged in to a demo account as a teacher. So something you all should know about CK12 is that everything on CK12 is absolutely free. You will never hit a paywall. There are no advertisements. You never enter your credit card information. Everything is absolutely free for you to use. The thing that you're gonna to wanna to do though is you're going to want to sign in or sign up for CK12. That way our intelligent platform can make recommendations, can save some of your resources. 
So that is kind of the one thing that we ask that you do is to sign up for an account. We have lots of single sign-on options available for you. Um, and then be logged in when you're using CK12. Um, there are two slightly different versions of our site. If you are a parent or an educator, you would want to sign up for a teacher account. And you would be seeing this page that has the top concepts, that asks you what you want to teach today, and then has some um, resources down here below. The students see a slightly different version. We know that students like to jump right into a search. Um, so we put the search bar front and center here. There's also easy access if you are a teacher or parent who's given the student a class access code, they can type it in here. And then they have easy access to each um, subject as well. So I'm gonna switch back over to the teacher version and that's the main version I'm gonna be showing you today. One of my favorite places to navigate CK12 is this explore menu up at the top. And this gives you quick links to all of CK12's products. If you know that you're looking for a Flexbook 2.0, you can start your search here. If you're looking for adaptive practice or simulations or clicks, I'm gonna show you lots of ways to navigate and find resources. Um, something else that I think is helpful to mention is that there's a link here for our webinars page. And when you go to our webinars page, you'll see not only our upcoming offerings, but you will also see our archived webinars as well. So if you're needing to learn about a specific subject, close out of this pop-up, such as uh, maybe a learning management system, perhaps you're using Google Classroom or you're using Canvas or Schoology, know that we have some resources available in our archived webinar section to help you. There's also a help menu up at the top that can give you um, answers to any questions that you might have when we're not here to answer them live for you. So you could go into teachers and parents and if you need to know how to create a class, how to manage class members, um, how to create a quiz, know that we have lots of information in our help center um, ready to assist you with any of your questions. I'm gonna press the logo to go back to our homepage. And when you're searching for content, you have, you have a bunch of different options as I'm showing you. Explore options, definitely one way to go. If you scroll down here to what do you wanna to teach today, you're gonna to see that we have math divided by level and by subject. Then we have our science, we have a couple of English books, some social studies, a few additional topics. Then we have our college books, books made for specific countries, and then translated versions of our books as well. Um, I think we got some questions in already about um, where we specialize and at CK12 we have the most comprehensive materials for middle school and high school math and science. Okay, as you can see, we do have some things beyond math and science, but for the most built out resources that have the most interactivity, um, the most adaptive practice questions that's mainly going to be in our middle school math and science. Um, if you are somebody who likes to search, you can search by um, a topic. I'll go with angles. And you can search in a specific book if you know you're looking for um, a, a specific grade level. Or you can search all of CK12's content. Now, we have a ton of search results for angles because that's an awfully broad um, topic. But you'll notice when I use the search bar, I have all of my filter options over here on the left. You're welcome to filter by grade, although I kind of find these categories to be the most handy if I know I'm looking for a video or if I want an interactive clicks or real, real world application, um, I'm able to select any of these categories over here on the left side. Um, I think one more thing I wanna show you is that um, for any of you non-math and science folks, um, I'm gonna search for something else that's just pretty general here, literature, you will notice that we don't have a ton of search results on the CK12 tab for literature. But if I move over a tab, community contributed, I don't know if you guys have noticed this on our site, but we have a community contributed area where you're going to see flexbooks that have been created by our users and published on our site. 
So you might like this literature in me book, uh, literature of the Renaissance. Um, since these are community contributed, they're not vetted by CK12. Um, they're, like I said, contributed by our users. So you would wanna open up these resources and make sure that they meet your needs. But search broad topic, search a specific topic, search CK12 content and search community contributed and hopefully you'll get a start at what you are looking for. Um, Katie, I think that's all I wanted to show them on this first navigation. Do we have any um, questions that we need to take on yet or should we talk about the 2.0 platform? Well, we just got a question that came in about the difference between Flexbooks and Flexbooks 2.0. Okay. Um, so that might be a great place to start. Um, people are kind of curious about what what's available content wise. So yeah, why don't you go ahead and jump in there and we can go from that point. Okay. So let me switch over. I'm going to take this screen back from here. I think our team's doing a great job answering the questions as they're coming in. Um, so we'll get that up and running. Okay, are you going to share your screen, Katie? Yep, it's coming up. Well, there, there we, we go. go. <laughs> yep, there there we go. just one more click. So we're going to jump into the 2.0 platform because that's a big question you guys are asking about. Um, and just to give you context, kind of over the last 12 years, we've changed the world with the introduction of digital textbooks called Flexbooks, and we've converted that to the 2.0 platform. So we use the word platform now because what we offer is so much more than a textbook. Our platform uses the power of artificial intelligence and machine learning to enable a student's personalized journey. Each lesson can be a powerful mix of content, including interactives, adaptive practice, videos, and so much more. Some lessons even offer inline questions to check for understanding during the lesson, and they also give students feedback on the answers to questions as they're learning. This personalized learning system adapts to the needs and skills of each student. Like Katie just said, a flexbook is not your ordinary textbook. These books are tightly integrated with clear, focused, and engaging interactives. You can find user contributed books on almost any subject imaginable on our site, like I just showed you, but I do want to highlight a few features of CK12's core offerings, our middle and high school math and science. So for our math teachers, we have books specifically designed for the common core that incorporate the latest in educational technology. These books include multimodal integrated resources to support the experiential Socratic spirit of the Common Core. The instructive text and images offer formative assessment with immediate feedback. We help answer that age old student question, when will I ever use this? By grounding our questions and interactives in the real world. CK12's interactive science flexbooks are brimming with real world applications. Students explore bigger thinking club questions like, why do trips to Mars happen only during certain launch windows? How effective is a wind turbine? Or why do diamonds sparkle? All Flexbooks can include embedded videos that you've either created or curated. You have the ability to add inline questions in your books for students to get immediate feedback. And both our simulations and our plics can be embedded right in any lesson. Lessons in the Flexbook 2.0 platform can have either attached adaptive practice or a customized quiz. And we'll talk more about adaptive practice in a few minutes. One thing you can't do with a print textbook is instantly change the text to a different language. At the bottom of our site, you will see a Google Translate box that allows you to change the text and menu options for a lesson to dozens of languages. The toolbar for our Flexbook 2.0 platform has a section for notes and highlighting. When moving from printed text to digital text, students still need the ability to highlight and annotate. They're able to do this on CK12. Any notes and highlights stay in the individual student's account so they can refer to them at any time. 
And then perhaps one of the most exciting things about a Flexbook is your ability to customize and localize content for your region and your students. Customizing a book can be as easy as spending a few minutes changing a title and rearranging the scope and sequence, or it can be as involved as working with other teachers to systematically update a book to reflect your standards and represent your community. Again, this is the subject of the next webinar in our sequence called Customizing CK-12 Flexbooks and Adaptive Practice. So we're not gonna go too in depth about customizing today. Just know that that is something that you are able to do with these books. Um, so you can use our content as is, or you can click Customize to adapt the content. Um, you can even combine content from different books or if you're wanting to create your own book from scratch, you are able to do that as well. All right, uh, demo time again. Let me take over the screen and let's talk about 2.0. So the question originally was, is what's the difference with Flexbooks and Flexbooks 2.0? Um, from the Explore menu, I'm gonna select Flexbooks 2.0. And you could read a little bit about our Flexbooks 2.0 here. What's new? Um, we're saving teachers time, bulk assign. We've got all these embedded interactives, actively engaging students, a new simpler interface. Um, but let me jump into a book and show you what this looks like. I'm gonna jump into our middle school math six book here on the 2.0 platform. And you'll see that we have a title and a description for the book. Notice that our math books also have a teacher edition that you might want to access as well, because it has great information about how to pace your lessons and how to best engage your students. And you have options when you are looking um, here at the, the, the choose button. I could add this book to my library, which I would suggest you do if you find a book that you know you're gonna be going back to. Just go ahead and put it in your library. It's kind of like bookmarking it for later. If I was wanting to customize this book and rearrange the scope and sequence, I could do that right here. Um, I've got the option to add to another book if I'm gonna be combining books, or of course I can share this with my class. So here I see all of the chapters of this book and I can toggle the arrows to see um, the different sections. And if I jump into a section, um, we're going to go into unknown values. I am taken to what's called the start page where I have a little information about this lesson and then I also have other ways to learn. And this is really important. At CK12, we believe that students learn in a variety of ways. And so we want to give them choices of how to learn this content. You can see that we have some related lessons here. We have related um, videos. That's what the, the play symbol is. And then this is a Plex, one of our homegrown interactives. So um, with that little brain there. So, at the beginning of the lesson, if students need to review, if they need um, additional information, here are those other ways to learn. But when you press start, that's when you're taken into this interactive lesson. Um, so what's really exciting about Flexbooks 2.0 is that we have interactives just right here embedded in the content. Um, here is one about climbing mountains. Let's try it. Um, it's telling me to move a red point up the mountain and I can see the values are changing and I'm going to be asked some questions right here about this interactive that I just did. Um, what will the value be when I reach the top of the mountain? I think it was going to be zero. I'm going to check it. Ah, great job. Here I am being asked another question. What is the value of question? I would go back up to my interactive. I'm going to miss this one though. And notice that I have the ability to retry. Um, these inline questions engage students as they're learning. They are different from our adaptive practice. They're just questions that are in, in line in the text for students to experiment with the lesson that they're learning. Here is another interactive with some more questions. 
another interactive. Again, this is this is exciting, especially at the lower grades, at, at the, the middle school grade levels. We're very interactive um, with our lessons, trying to get students to learn this topic. Um, let me go back out to um, the homepage again by pressing the CK12 logo. Now that you have a little bit of a sense of what our books do, um, I could also jump into a Flexbook by um, selecting from this what do you want to teach today option. Um, in science, if I select physics, I'm immediately taken into our physics 2.0 Flexbook. And I'm going to look at, um, let's go into average velocity. Again, I have related content that um, are simulations, clicks, video, real world application, study guide. I can go into the lesson. We always start with some exciting prompts. You can see that I've opened this lesson before and done some highlighting. Our highlighting and our note taking um, options are right there. So I can highlight, I can um, view my notes over here in my toolbar. In the 2.0 uh, world, your toolbar is on the right side and you have um, several different menu options here. One of them is notes and highlights where I can see what I've highlighted. These aren't very good highlights, unfortunately. Hopefully your students would be highlighting in a more meaningful way. As I scroll through this lesson, here is a simulation that's just right here. Here's another simulation just right there for the students. Um, if I wanted to get the related content that was on that start page that I showed you, I can select related content here. And these are the same options that I saw on that start page. Okay, when you are looking to get these lessons in the hands of your students, you have a few choices. Notice this big assign button up here at the top. If I press assign, I have the option to assign through a CK12 class or Google Classroom. You don't need to do both. If you're a Google Classroom user, you would assign through Google Classroom. If you need a learning management system, if you need us to help um, show student progress, you would choose CK12. This I don't see my LMS option is for our Canvas and Schoology users who would be assigning lessons within Canvas and within Schoology. Um, we're gonna be talking more about assignments and student progress in a little bit. So um, why don't I go ahead and pause there for a minute and see how people are doing um, with the 2.0 platform. Sure, thanks Lindsay. So most of kind of what Lindsay has been showing you was within that 2.0 platform with all those pieces consolidated in one place. Our older Flexbooks don't necessarily have that related content there. Um, so that's kind of the biggest difference there. And then also when we talk about assignments, um, having the practice and quiz attached within there is going to be pretty big on that. Um, we have a question about holding students accountable for work. And I know you're going to talk about assignments kind of in the next section and adaptive practice and pieces. Um, but maybe you could talk about any strategies you've heard of teachers holding them accountable for work within the lesson itself. Um, or we can save that for later on. Linz, I don't think we can hear you, so let's oh, have you. Sorry, sorry, I was, yes, I <laughs> was enjoying talking to myself there. Um, let's, let's talk about this for just a second. Uh, ways to hold your students accountable. Um, one thing, I was just showing you the highlighting and note taking. Um, right now, this is just attached to the student account. So you as a teacher are not able to see those, but I know of teachers who are having students, you know, take screenshots of this and send it to them, showing that they've highlighted, annotated um, their assignments. That's one thing that you could do. Another thing, of course, is to check out the adaptive practice, which I'm gonna be talking about in just a second, which if you assign the adaptive practice, you're gonna get a report showing how your students did, how much time they spent on the lesson, um, what their skill level is after doing some of those practice questions. And the really cool thing about um, our Flexbooks 2.0, I'm going to show you something really quickly, is that if you have a class set up and um, you go into an assignment, 
Again, more on this later. If you're like, whoa, she's clicking way too fast. I know I'm clicking way too fast, but I want to get to something to show you. If I have assigned a lesson to my students in 2.0, from the toolbar, I can select insights. And let's see, this is our class for winter 2020. And I can select a student and I can see how long they spent on this lesson. Um, this was actually me playing around with it. And you can see that I spent two minutes and 20 seconds on this lesson. And you can kind of tell how much time I spent in each of these different parts. So Katie, jumping ahead a little bit, but hopefully that at least intrigued some folks about some features of our 2.0 books. Great, thanks. Um, and then I know you showed kind of an embedded interactive, but maybe if you could click on explore and just show what a Plix is. A couple people had questions on what a Plix was. Ah, cool, yeah. Let me go back out to the homepage. Um, I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the homepage here and we have browse pages set up for our simulations and our Plix. And if I click on the Plix option, we have over 1200 bite-sized interactives. Um, on all of these different topics here. So arithmetic, biology, physics, earth science. Um, I can change branches, I can search these, um, but they are just quick interactives that come with a series of questions that are designed to help students learn. So there's usually something that you're doing with a red dot. So here I'm matching some things up. If I need to learn more about the topic, we link to the lesson that relates to the Plix Interactive. After I've done some interactivity, I am taken to some questions. Since this is just a practice tool, not a cutthroat assessment, we allow hints. And then you are able to see your correct answer if you miss it. But Katie, these are fun. Like I see a lot of teachers using these as warm-ups, um, as bell ringers. Um, or even after a lesson for some review. Um, our questions are multiple choice, true, false, select all that apply, um, all kinds of different ways to engage in our PLIC. So for math and science, again, there's 1,200 of these. So I, I encourage you to come out to this page and find a concept that's something that you're teaching right now that you can get in the hands of your students. Great, so um, we have one last question on Plix. Um, so it says, does Plix work on iPads? Yes, it works on tablets, iPads, computers, desktops, all the above. Um, it gets a little complicated and doesn't work on a screen size for a phone. Um, and therefore you might just wanna have them work kind of at that particular piece. Um, so I think we're gonna launch a poll here in a second just to get a sense of how people are doing before we jump into the adaptive practice part. So let's see if we can click on that poll and get it launched. I think we have a different host this time. I don't know if we can find the, the poll. We'll give it another second here to see if we can pop it up. If not, I was just gonna ask how, how comfortable people were at finding a Flexbook right now. Ah, there it is. Um, yeah, just, just hoping that you're, you're feeling a little, um, little more at ease about finding a Flexbook and re related resources on CK12. So just let us know real quick. Are you super comfortable, very comfortable, comfortable, not comfortable? How are we doing at getting you introduced to our platform? Okay, thanks for taking on that poll there. All right, that's, that's, you know, most people are out of that not comfortable. Hopefully by the end of this webinar, we can get everybody out of that not comfortable and up to very comfortable or super comfortable. Um, especially I know a lot of you are gonna be exploring um, on your own after this. So that's, that's great. Thanks for, thanks for taking that poll. Great, so I think with that, we're gonna move into adaptive practice. All right, this is when things get really exciting. Um, our CK12 adaptive practice system has over 150,000 questions covering math, science, and spelling. We have questions at three levels that adapt to student performance. We offer content when students struggle. 
And then our adaptive practice is customizable into quizzes. Um, and that's gonna be covered in kind of the next session in the series called Customizing CK12 and Adaptive Practice. So I'm gonna show you several ways to access adaptive practice depending on if you're assigning a Flexbook 2.0 lesson or if you just want the standalone modality. But let's, let's talk about how it works first. In general, here's how it works. Our system is set up to challenge students to answer 10 questions correctly. Students will see this at the top of their practice. Get in the game, get 10 answers to complete your practice goal. Our system meets students where they are. With three levels of questions, easy, medium, and hard, the system will match the student's level and will gradually increase or decrease difficulty depending on how students are performing. This means a student who is struggling may hit the goal of 10 correct with all easy questions, and a student who is more advanced might have more of a mix of levels. For teachers, this ensures that each student is progressively and appropriately challenged while maintaining a clear record of each student's level of understanding. Having questions that adapt to students' needs is awesome, but CK12 takes it to the next level by making content recommendations in the moment. If a student is struggling, CK12 will intervene by recommending helpful resources like reads and videos. And this is really the magic of the system. If you are managing lots of students, I know a lot of you are doing this from home right now, but think back to being in your classroom and having 30 students in your class and having a difficult time getting to everybody and making sure their individual needs are supported. Our system is gonna do the heavy lifting for you. We're gonna ensure that each student is being appropriately challenged and supported. Okay, let's take a look at a sample practice screen for adding and subtracting money. Here we have some very expensive hot dogs and french fries, um, but this is just to kind of walk you through what to expect on the screen. Up there at the top, that number one, this is the progress bar, and it displays the number of questions answered correctly. You can see that our system has already set the goal of getting 10 correct, and this is a system requirement. It cannot be changed by the teacher or student. They're always trying to get 10 questions correct. Uh, there at number two, you see the skill level meter that will increase or decrease based on the student's correct and incorrect answers. Different types of questions appear in practice, including multiple choice, true, false, fill in the blank, select all that apply, Images are also included in some questions when applicable. Uh, four down there, hints are available at the bottom left during practice for most of our concepts. Sometimes the hints appear as text and sometimes it's even a short video. A scratch pad is available for all questions if students need to use their mouse or stylus or fingers and write on the screen to solve a problem. And then we have an improve this question option that gives users a chance to report any issue that you might see with a question or an answer to the CK12 staff. So when a student presses stop now on an adaptive practice, they will see this report. If you are a teacher who has assigned this practice to your student, you will also have access to the same report when the assignment is turned in. You can see if the student met the goal of getting 10 correct, which would be 100%. Here you see that only seven questions were completed and submitted. Other information includes the best streak and time spent. An extremely helpful indicator of a student's understanding of a concept is the skill meter, which shows student progress from beginning to mastery. If you want more information about that skill meter, you can click on the info icon or press learn more in the pop-up box to get a help desk article. And one thing you see on the screen is that we have recommendations for how to continue exploring this concept. For instance, our intelligence system says that students who watch this video score an 87% or higher on the practice. If you were to keep scrolling down this report, you'd see each question, 
you would see it's easy, medium, hard label, and the exact answer the student typed or selected. After viewing this report, students always have the option to keep practicing. They can start and stop at any time and even continue beyond 10 correct. Okay, let's put all of this together and I'm gonna take the screen back. And let's go back to, um, well, we can stay on, let's, uh, let's go back out to the home page. Okay, several different ways to access practice. Um, one way is to go straight into a 2.0 book. So here I am in our Earth Science for Middle School book. And let's do something in planet Earth. Um, solar eclipses, that sounds like fun. Go to the start page, press start. <clears throat> And down in the right corner, this is where our adaptive practice lives. When I select view practice, it says get in the game. Students will need to get 10 answers correct. Um, since I'm logged in as a teacher, I'm just able to preview this practice. I'm also able to download it as a worksheet for anybody who needs a PDF version. Um, for folks with access issues, you can download our practice questions. Of course, they're no longer adaptive once you've downloaded the worksheet. And then you can also customize this into a quiz, which I told you is, a, is the subject of our next webinar in the series of customizing adaptive practice and Flexbooks. But know that that option is right there. When I preview these questions, start by getting 10 correct, it's gonna adapt, it's gonna offer help. Let's start practicing. So here's that screen that I was just showing you, okay? Notice that I can come down here and I can get a hint to this question. All right, got it. I have a scratch pad, which is, might be more meaningful in math when I'm trying to figure out angles. Um, or do anything on the scratch pad here. And then I can answer some questions. All right, got the first one correct. Plot spoiler, I'm gonna miss this one. I get a positive message even if I miss a question. I'm gonna miss that one. Not gonna do very well on this practice. I wanna show you that. It's giving me another try, that's really nice. And I want to show you that it's not going to let me miss too many questions before our system is going to intervene and say, wait a second, you need to take a time out here. So what's happening is that it realized I was just answering um, random, I was just typing in random answers to my questions. So we have popped up here a Plix Interactive a video, and a lesson. And we strongly recommend that students jump into one of these before returning to practice. So again, imagine you're in a classroom of lots of students, hopefully that day comes again, some point sooner than later, um, and you can't get to everybody all at once, but your students who are doing awesome on adaptive practice are gonna get um, a range of harder questions, and your students who are struggling are gonna get these um, content recommendations in the moment from our practice system. Okay, when students stop for now, they would see a report pop up. Again, I was just in preview mode since I'm a teacher, but I'm going to show you reports here in a few minutes. Um, so that's what it looks like. If I, if I assign this lesson right here, what I am assigning to my students is this adaptive practice. So I will get analytics on, um, I'll get insights on how much time they spent on this lesson, but then I'm gonna get a score passed back to CK12 or passed back to Google Classroom um, that shows how the student did out of 100% on this practice. So it's pretty exciting to be able to assign both the lesson and the practice together by just pressing assign and going into your preferred system. For any of you who say, all right, I love your adaptive practice, but my students, they don't need the, the reading material. They don't need the Flexbook 2.0. Um, you can come up to this explore menu option and notice that we have a section that's just for adaptive practice. So you can come over here to adaptive practice 
and we give you a slightly different option to do some browsing. So you can browse um, by subject. And you can tell over here on the right that I've already attempted some of these questions for adaptive practice in geometry. But I can pick up and I can continue adaptive practice at any time. Um, so this is great for students who want to do some practice uh, before dinner, some practice after dinner. I can always improve my skill level meter and I can keep practicing, okay? Um, so I'm just picking right up here where I left off, which was say, with some suggestions here. But when I stop my practice, this is what I was talking about earlier, is that um, I have previously attempted 17 of these questions and I've answered four correctly. Two of the eight easy ones, two of the five hard ones, and you can scroll down and you can see the exact answers that were typed in here. This is what a report would look like if you have assigned this to your students. So let me go back out here. Oops. Let me go back out um, to CK12. And same thing if I come down here to adaptive practice and I go into a subject like biology, if I just want to assign, uh, let's say we're looking at the Nobel Prize. If I wanted to assign this to my class, I can assign just this practice lesson. So the 2.0 lesson material won't come with it. It will just be the practice. I can also customize and download the worksheet. All right, Katie, how are we doing on adaptive practice? So we have a couple of questions. Um, one has to do with students accessing practice beyond the practice they might assign um, and whether or not they need to be signed in. Um, so the answer to that is that if the system is going to kind of they get a chance to try one just to get a sense, but in order for the system to actually make these recommendations and fully work the way that it is, they do need to be logged in so that we can actually adjust based on how they're doing already. So that would be something, but if you're coming from Canvas or Schoology or something like that, then their credentials would still be passed through. Um, and then the next question that we have here has to do with students and turning in and seeing their progress. So why don't we talk about assignments and reports um, and that may answer this already. And if not, we'll make sure to cover it kind of after we cover the assignments and reports section. So with that, I'm gonna borrow the screen back and we are going to share this and we're gonna kick into assignment and reports for related content. Uh, great. Um, we know that so many of you are still exploring CK12 and getting a feel for the different resources. Um, as a reminder, what you see on the screen here, these are what we consider to be our core assignable modalities. Um, we say modalities, but that basically means different ways to learn. So on our system, you can assign a read, which is the lesson, a video, a plix, a simulation, adaptive practice, or a real world application. While all of our resources have a unique URL that you can always just copy and paste to share with others, or you can use the green share plane to share, assigning a modality is a, is a different thing. So if you assign something, this will generate a report for teachers and students to view. One note, we've already had some questions about Canvas and Schoology and Google Classroom come in. If you're already using one of those learning management systems, we highly recommend you stick with it. Don't try to create CK12 classes. That gets confusing for students and you for where your reports are. Just kind of stick with that. Integrate Canvas and Schoology on your end um, or connect to Google Classroom from CK12 um, because we easily integrate with those interfaces. For Canvas and Schoology, once you're integrated, you can create assignments from within those environments. Um, and from Google Classroom, you can assign directly to that. We do have a few LMS breakout sessions. They're in the archived webinars and available in the deep dives chapter of the CAP Flexbook for any of you registered for that program. Um, and these explicitly show you how to work with those learning management systems versus creating a CK12 class. So just something to keep in mind as we talk about assignments. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is that across our site, you're going to see options to share resources and to assign resources. So Lindsay kind of referenced this a bit. 
But for example, within this 2.0 Flexbook, we have a lesson on continental grift, drift. And at the top, it says assign to class or assign. And on the right side, it says assign a class, share, and share to class. So if you press either the assign button at the top or the assign to class button on the right side, this pop-up box will show up asking if you want to assign to CK12 or Google Classroom. So as we said, that just kind of happens automatically and then you can connect. Canvas and Schoology are slightly different because you're doing that from within there. Now, when you create an assignment this way, it means that the student's grade gets passed back to you when they click turn in and you as a teacher can see their reports. If I click the share button under that, or any green share a plan across our site, then I'm sharing a link to that resource, either with Google Classroom or with a social network. That is just sharing. There's no grade report attached. There's no turn in for students. You're just having access to that as a whole, as a reference. The share to class option at the bottom is specifically for CK12 classes, if you're using that. Um, and it works the same way the share resource works in that it's sharing that resource to a class, um, but it's not assigning any fees. We often recommend that you share kind of a full flexbook, just like we did for the flexbook for this program. Um, and that way students have that as a reference that if you need to assign it, you do so with the assign button. And one other way to share without assigning is you via the URL, um, which you can always copy and paste, share in an email, share on social, however you want to do that. All right, thanks for explaining that, Katie. Um, We've shown them how to assign a lesson from a Flexbook 2.0, but I want to show everyone how they can assign individual modalities as well, such as our clicks, our simulations, our videos, our real world applications, um, if they want to assign those separate from a Flexbook. One option is to use the search bar at the top of the homepage and type in a concept. In this case, we're seeing results for continental drift. You can click on that top concept page, or you can use our filter options to see a certain type of modality. Another way to find individual modalities is to use the option at the bottom of the home page or the explore menu at the top of any page. These can take you to the browse pages for our Plex simulations and adaptive practice. Um, I want to show you real quick how to find the assign button for our interactives for both our Plex and our simulations, you will find the orange button in the top menu bar. If you are looking to assign a standalone read, a video, or a real world application, you can do so on the left menu, like this read on angles, or this video on earthquakes, or this real world application called keep your spit to yourself. These are all assigned the same way and they all report the same way. Notice you can also view and assign practice from the box in the upper right hand corner of these pages as well. All right, uh, I want to show what assignments and reports look like in a CK12 class. So um, let me go back to CK12. And I'm gonna go into a class. So like we've been saying, if you are a Google Classroom, Canvas, or Schoology user, you will not be setting up classes on CK12. If you are a parent working with your students at home right now, you might set up a class for each of your students. My, my um, sister homeschools year round and she has a class for Cecilia and a class for Maddox and a class for Audrey. Um, so you can always create classes um, by doing this create a class option. You can add in your students and um, work, with, work with our classes that way. Um, I'm gonna go into an old class that we have called Summer 2019, where we had a bunch of student interns populate some work for us. And so when you're looking at assignments, you can see that for this class, we assigned 11 things. Most of them were in July. I assigned nine things in July from a 2.0 lesson, a plix, a video, a quiz. 
But in assignments, I can also view anything that has ever been assigned through my account. So that's up to 203 things in case I wanted to assign it to my class here. Um, the cool part, what I want to show you is our reports. And these reports are available in Google Classroom and in Canvas, and we're working on it for Schoology right now, but you can access this exact same report um, in those different learning management systems. And here you see on the left that we have our, um, again, student interns pretending to do some assignments for us, just first name, last initial. And there's lots of different ways to view these reports. Um, I have my heat map turned on here so that I can easily at a glance see who is doing well in the green, maybe where some of, my, some of my students are struggling that are more in the orange, or obviously this red is that these students have not even attempted these questions. Um, if I wanna see how Ryan did on his quiz that he got 88% on, I can select this cell and it is gonna show me that Ryan did this quiz back in June and he got seven out of eight questions correct. He spent two minutes on this quiz and I can see the exact answers that he missed. So this is really powerful here to be able to go in and say, okay, Sonali, let's see what she did. Um, so she got five of eight correct. She only spent two minutes on it as well. And I can see exactly what she entered in as the incorrect answers. So these check marks over here for our real world applications, our simulations, our videos and plexes, you can tell that we just have a check mark saying that the student accessed that video, that the student did some interactivity with that Plix. They answered a challenge me question. Um, with the Sims, they use some of the sliders to manipulate some variables. So the check mark is more of a completion score. It's the quizzes and practices where we're really able to give you some analytics about how the students did. So I can tell that Ryan, he got 10 correct. He got 10 out of 11 correct, and he did seven out of eight hard questions for this practice. Let's see, Natalie, she got 10 out of 15 correct, and she only was able to answer three of the six hard questions, and I could get all the information down here. So if you need granular information about how an individual student has done, you can do that. If you just need an at a glance, all right, are, are my students progressing okay? We give you that at a glance option as well. Um, notice that there is a CSV option here. If you are needing to download this as a CSV file to then upload into a gradebook, um, you're able to download this um, here. And if you need any additional help on how to read reports, we've got some information available off to the side here. Um, Katie, I think we've got a few slides to show what's available with our insights. Again, I previewed it earlier, but why don't you show, um, why don't you show them what, what's available right now? Sure. Um, and just the, I'm not sure if you talked about the turn in button and the needs to review. I don't know if there's one in this class or not. Um, but if you clicked on a red bar, like if you click on any of those red ones there, cause I know we have that question, Ryan, here's a perfect example that needs to turn in is the example that tells you that they've done work, but they haven't actually turned it in yet. And so you'd want to email your student and tell them to make sure to click that turn in button. Um, but with that, I think we're going to go show you what some insights look for, because these are super helpful um, in terms of seeing both within our current platform, as well as this is available on Schoology, um, which I know some people have been asking about because we don't have the same level of class reporting yet. So for insights, if you open the lesson you assigned, so open it from within the assignment, within your class, or a matching learning management system, um, you can then see that class and the insights that are available there. So this is a really quick overview. You can see that Katie um, has mastered this skill level. So the practice, she hit a skill level of mastery and spent about a minute and 16 seconds on this lesson. And you can even see where she did that. Lindsay previewed this a bit earlier. And then if you click on Ryan, you can see that he's exploring it. He's taken a little more time, hasn't quite gotten the practice yet, not really sure what's happening, um, but you know, did their work, turned in their assignment, got credit for doing their homework, but it still needs some support to really understand this piece. 
And you can see that it's color coded on the right side to help you kind of see how students are doing. Um, it would be gray if they hadn't turned in their work and then kind of going up from red to that darker green as they master content. The other piece that you'll see for our science content, which is where this is currently available, is you or a student might see a flashing teal dot like that next to properties and metals. Um, and if you or they click on it, you'll see we recommend that they review this paragraph or this bolded list because something in that paragraph or list has not been answered correctly in their practice. So in this case, it says the majority of metals are blank, meaning they're capable of being stretched um, without becoming weaker or more brittle. And if I went back to there, you can see the fourth bullet point down answers what that vocabulary word is that they would be looking for, that characteristic of metals. Um, and so that's two different pieces for insights that might be useful, the time and the skill level um, for practice, as well as for science, that paragraph mapping that we have available. Um, I think given our time, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and continue on, wrap up a couple things, and then we'll jump back into Q&A and see what we have for Q&A. So those of you guys joining us today, this is a great first webinar. If this is your first webinar with CK12, we gave you an overview. We do have two more webinars in that core webinar series to get certified, and you do need to attend those live in order to become certified. We are next offering the rest of that series for the next two Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Um, next week, it's customizing Flexbooks in practice. So if you want to talk about making quizzes, setting your own assignments, all available there. And then the Tuesday after that, strategies for using CK12. If you can't make those, no worries. We'll offer them throughout the spring again, um, but those are your next chances to take those webinars. And if you haven't already registered, but you say, hey, I already did one of these webinars live. I only need two more. I might as well get my professional development certification. Kind of you see if my district will accept that join a community of educators, all the rest, you can go to ck12.org slash certified and learn more and register officially for that program. Now, we always try to improve. We love hearing on how we were on our feedback form as well as what we can do better the next time. So if you have a minute, please consider going to tinyurl.com slash ck12feedback1920 um, and giving us a sense of what we could change and make better from there. So with that, we wanna thank you for joining us today. Please be assured that you'll continue to be supported by our team. We're happy to help you. You can send us an email at support or at jumpstart at ck12.org. Um, and please let your social networks know about CK12 and your participation in our program. We're on all the socials as at CK12 Foundation and this program uses the hashtag CK12 Certified. So I think that's it for today's programming, but as promised, we have some questions in the Q&A. If you don't have any questions, you're welcome to start signing off, um, and we will stay on answering those last questions. Several people were just asking about um, attendance of, do they need to do anything special to document their attendance of just by attending the Zoom webinar today, we have a record of that, so there's nothing special that you need to do. But if you have joined the Certified Educator Program, you will find a matching assignment for um, the session in our course book. Um, this webinar is being recorded and it will be on that ck12.org slash webinars page um, within the next 24 hours. So you can always go back and revisit, um, revisit that as well. Um, let's see, what else are you seeing in Q&A, Katie? We had a question about a teacher being added um, through Google Classroom. So within the CK12 class environment, we do have the option under members to convert a member that is a teacher up to be a co-teacher who can assign and see student reports. Um, that is not necessarily available in Classroom. I don't know how that works. Um, if you're allowed to do that for any other assignment, you can do that in Google Classroom and they could see the same reports. Um, but I haven't seen that particular piece. Um, so I would check with Google Classroom and their support for how co-teachers might work either now or if not, um, check with them down the road or encourage them to add that feature like we have in CK12 classes. There's a question about the course book that looks like a CEP question. Um, if you register for the program, we will, every week we send out a welcome email to new registrants um, and you'll have all the links to the book and that particular session and the assignments and everything that goes with it, as well as the on-demand sessions that are included in that book because the videos are acceptable there.
And it looks like a lot of these questions have to do with the CEP. So Lindsay's pulled that page up for you. You can see the registration button there. Um, as I said, if you register for the program, each week we send out a welcome email with all the information. It has links to the book. It has links to um, the first assignment that you're working with. It has all those pieces. The pop-up when you fill out the form even has a direct link to the class if you wanna get a head start before we even send you an official welcome email. Um, and if you aren't able to attend a webinar, you're always welcome to see that on the webinars page, but you do need to attend the three core live webinars, the one today, and then the customizing and strategies ones over the next two weeks or the same ones later this spring um, in order to be able to access that piece. Um, and if you are having any issue and aren't seeing that, please email jumpstart at ck12.org. If you said you've registered, but you didn't get a registration and it's been more than a week, um, please go ahead and do that. Um, and we'll follow up with you. And it looks like we have a couple questions about student accounts. So students have can see almost an identical piece of what you're seeing and Lindsay's been demoing today. So in that regard, students would create an account on CK12 with a class if you're hosting it there, or if you're using one of our integrated learning management systems, they do not need a separate account. They would just access content from within Google Classroom or Canvas or Schoology. Um, and they would see that Flexbook, just like Lindsay was showing it today, instead of view practice, they would have start practice. Instead of assign, they would have turn in. Um, but kind of the core content is identical there as it is in a particular piece. Um, and this is, can I see an individual student's report? So maybe we could go ahead and pull that class report up and click on an individual student. And under reports, we'd wanna pull that up from there. Thanks, Katie. <laughs> <clears throat> so one of the options I was showing you how you can click on these individual cells, you can also select a student from over here on the left as well to kind of get an at a glance how that student is doing. And then again, you can jump into any of these if I wanted to see why Bryce got a 75 on this quiz. That gives me the individual quiz report or again, I can see everything that Natalie is doing by selecting Natalie over here on the left. And that individual report is the same one the student would see. They might see it either next to the 2.0 lesson or in their reports within their class piece there. And we had a question in regards on how different this webinar is from previously connected ones. Every time we do a webinar, we update it and tweak it just slightly for any new releases to our system. Um, anyone that had that 2.0 platform one in there is probably pretty similar our older Flexbook or our older webinars with different Flexbook titles would be different in that regard. Looks like we're wrapping up the rest of these questions. So we're getting a few more in here. Um, and we have a question about the standard of the contents of the Flexbook. So um, maybe Lindsay could just click into our search in some way, shape or form. And we maintain the quality we work with content experts, we do reviews of books, and anytime anyone says there might be a little typo or something there, we would update that and align it and go from there. Um, we do keep our content separate. So you can see here the CK12 content and our community contributed content. There's over 220,000 variations of our Flexbooks. So if you did jump into that community world, you would want to vet that a little bit more deeply. Um, but we do maintain and update our content and keep it separate for that reason. And then we have a question about solutions to adapt to practice. Um, and when you make an assignment, Lindsay, so if you have an, maybe that dividing one, if you click on the assign button in there, you can go ahead and see when you assign 2.0 lessons with practice attached, or you assign um, that individually, the show answer option is defaulted off. So students can see the answers they put in but nothing else besides that answer and whether it's right or wrong until after the due date. Um, so that would be a way to see kind of how they did in practice versus um, them seeing the correct answer as they work their way through.
And we had a couple questions related to offline access. Um, your custom flexbooks are available offline. You can download worksheets for all of our practice. Um, so those are options. If you need particular resources for a particular environment, please email us at support and we can follow up with you accordingly. Um, and then it looks like there are some questions about content down the road. We do have a statistics book available in our older environment that you can click add to Flexbook and convert to 2.0 if you wanted that already in your 2.0 environment. Um, we do not have that uh, immediately available. Um, and we just keep that in mind. If you clicked on any one of these older Flexbooks and you clicked add to Flexbook textbook, you could do that. We're going to talk all about that customization in next week's session. Um, so definitely check that out if you are interested in converting books from the older environment to the newer environment or making any other customization on there. We're going to last round for questions. We got one more in here. And if that's it, we'll kind of wrap up from there. And how do we get to insights? So insights, if you open a lesson through the assignment workflow. So Lindsay's going to go ahead and open that up. Um, and this is the same if you're in Canvas or Schoology or Google Classroom. Um, whatever that assignment workflow is, you would simply open that lesson, go ahead and click on that, and then click on the link just like a student would click on the link. Um, and then your insights are available in the top right under our toolbar. Um, and I'm going to answer this question live because I know we get this a lot in terms of read aloud. We don't have a read aloud option built into our system, but our system is available on Chrome and there are a bunch of Chrome extensions that do read aloud um, and convert text to speech. So we would recommend kind of checking that out and testing it out with your students based on what they use for other options. Katie, I think we've about reached the end of our Q&A time. Um, if there are any questions that we have not answered for you, support at CK12 dot org would be a great place to send your questions. Um, otherwise, thank you for joining us today and we hope to see you on a future webinar. Thanks so much.